Hi, welcome back to the podcast. I'm so excited to be here with you today. My name is Haley Sohn. I'm a nutritionist. I'm a brain training weight loss coach. You are listening to Weight Loss Without Dieting. And this episode is part two of the two-part episode talking about my pregnancy, weight gain, and weight loss journey. So last week we talked about my pregnancy weight gain, how I handled everything, um, gave you some good nuggets, whether you are pregnant or not. (laughs) And this week we're gonna talk about my postpartum weight loss, how I've handled it, um, all of my tips for you ladies out there if you are in that situation, losing weight after having a baby, um, kind of diving into like the specific challenges that you might be faced with. And if you are not postpartum, this is still going to be helpful. There are so many things that are the same, you know, whether you are just had a baby and are trying to lose weight or not. There's a lot of of nuggets in here. Um, Let me just, spoiler alert, other people's opinions (laughs) is like the one that came up so much in last week's episode and is going to come up so much again in this week's episode. And it's really helpful for you to know how to handle all of that because people are gonna have opinions no matter where you are in life, (laughs) whether you just had a baby or not. So stay tuned, you know, if you're not on that postpartum weight loss journey, that's okay, there's still gonna be a lot for you in this episode. So we're gonna dive right in. I'm gonna share everything that I went through um, and all of the things that you can do for yourself to make this a smooth, enjoyable, and I don't want to say productive. I was going to say a productive weight loss journey. No, smooth and enjoyable. Let's just go with that. Okay. So first of all, I wasn't sure when I was going to be ready. Um, I was excited to lose the weight after I had the baby um, because this is something that I I think losing weight is so fun and so enjoyable and such an opportunity to get to know your body better. So I was really excited about it, but I didn't know when I would be ready. This is my first baby. So I really had no idea what to expect. Um, So that would be kind of my first tip to you. Don't, if you're pregnant, if you are, you know, just had your baby, don't put a deadline or like um, a start date on when you're gonna start losing weight because you don't know, you don't know when you're going to be ready. You have to let your body where, where you are energy wise, sleep wise with your baby's health, all of that has to take precedence and lead, um, for when you're going to be ready to do this. So I was very loose about it. I was like, you know, when I feel ready, when I feel rested enough, then I'll get started with it, but not a day sooner than that. And I'm not, 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 going to be worrying about it before I'm ready. I didn't think about it. It wasn't on my mind. I didn't beat myself up for having two pieces of cake after, you know, before I was ready. Like I just, it was, I'm always honoring my body no matter where I am, but I was absolutely not stressing about getting, like losing my, my, um, postpartum weight before I was ready. I was just, I was eating the things. We got a lot of uh, freezer meals, which was amazing. Anyone who did that for us, thank you so much. That was so incredible. So I was just eating whatever, you know, whatever we had. We got some cakes and cookies and like real good goodies. Um, And I was just enjoying all of that. And I, I really was not focused on my weight one single day before I was really ready to dive in and get started with it. Um, The first month, was crazy for me and it will be for you too likely um whether you have had a baby or not and you know what to expect or not that first month is like intense you're in a hormonal fog you are not getting a lot of sleep you are might be laid up in bed for days at a time i mean there's days where i barely got out of bed because the baby was cluster feeding or you know it's just it's crazy so you don't know what to expect So give yourself that grace that first month might be real nuts. Um, And just don't get started until you're ready. So to give you a, uh, what am I looking for word wise here? Framework? 
that's not right. Reference point, that's it. Uh, to give you a reference point, I think my last weigh-in before I had the baby was about 160 or 165 pounds. I talked a little bit last week about my weight gain and I had set this goal of 25 pounds just as a reference point for me to see how my body was responding to being pregnant and making sure that I was always checking in with myself in terms of like my eating. Am I just eating for two now? Have I completely like gone off into that mindset and, you know, I'm not paying attention to my body anymore. You know, I really wanted to be checked in with that. And so 160, 165 is, is what would that be? It was like 15 or 20 pounds more than 20 pounds more than, um, over my weight gain goal. I think that's right. I'm not great at math. You guys, I'm really not good at it. So me trying to do it on the fly right now is a terrible idea. I didn't put this in my notes. I should just give up in terms of what that pound number is over, over the goal that I set. Anyways, my last way in before I had the baby was about 160 or 165 pounds. I cannot remember exactly. Um, and I'm currently today, my baby just turned four months and I'm currently at 132 pounds. My overall goal is 120 or 125. I'm going to see how I feel as I get closer to that. So I'm excited for that. I, I really love this process. Um, and I, I can't wait to like continue going. So I've, I've got, you know, what, five, 10 pounds more that I'm going to lose. Um, so as I, when I was ready, when I hit that point in my, you know, postpartum journey where I was like, okay, I feel good. I'm ready to lose the weight. My number one focus, um, was mindset. And this is the number one focus for my clients is mindset. I talk about it on here in many different ways, but how we think about our weight loss and food and our emotions will dictate 100% our results. So I really wanted to be focused on, on that um, and approach this whole process with above and beyond everything, love for my body and for what it's going through. Cause it went through a lot and yours will too. It's it, your body is doing incredible work, bringing new life into the world and incredible work, keeping that new life alive, whether you're breastfeeding or not, you are up awake in the middle of the night, keeping this baby alive. It's doing a lot. Your you, labor and delivery, I mean, it's a lot. So love for my body and what it looks like now, because it doesn't, you know, in those early weeks, didn't look anything like it did <laughs> before I got pregnant. And there were times where I was really tempted to go down that path of comparing what my body looks like now to how it used to look and despairing over that. And it's just not useful at all. So I always brought it back to love and appreciation and gratitude for my body and what it's going through because it's pretty amazing. Um, and my weight loss journey, I was really wanted it to, it will never be about pain, punishment, restriction, deprivation, nothing like that. Those really get you into this pendulum effect, which is, um, when we are at two extremes. So a pendulum, if you pull a pendulum all the way up to one side and then you release it, it is going to swing equally as far in the opposite direction. And when we get into these emotions of, I have to punish myself into and restrict myself and deprive myself into this weight loss, we are pulling that pendulum up and when it drops, it's going to swing to the other side of overdoing it, overeating, you know, going completely crazy on all of the snacks. 
And what we do when we do that is we get ourselves into the cycle where that pendulum is always swinging. It's either over here, overdoing it, eating all the things or over here, dieting and restricting and punishing ourselves into weight loss. And we're never going to find weight loss in that cycle. So my, what I teach my clients, what I talk about a lot here is that pendulum should be completely still and just hanging, hanging. It shouldn't be swinging at all. And to do that, we really have to come at weight loss from love and calm and peace. Those very still and centered emotions. And I hope that doesn't sound really woo woo. It's not at all. Um, it's, it's, this is very tied to your mindset and where your mindset is. Um, okay. Having a baby is extremely hectic. So mindset is really important. I was always reminding myself, like, no matter how carried away I get with the emotions of what's going on in my life, I have to bring it back to one thing. So I picked a thought that was going to like anchor me. And that is, I want to lose weight more than I want to use food to manage my emotional state. And always, no matter how crazy it got, just bringing it or gets, cause I'm still in it, bringing myself back to that. I want to lose weight more than I want to use food right now to manage my emotional state. I can manage my emotional state with my brain. I don't need the food. And so I always bring it back to that. It's so helpful. Pick one for yourself. Find a thought that you can believe right now that feels really strong for you right now. And that's what I'm always hammering home to my clients. Like we always have these thoughts, the destination thoughts that are like, well, you know, if I just loved my body and I, you know, never, ever wanted to overeat, that's great, but that you can't believe that right now. And so telling yourself that right now isn't helpful. You need to find a place that you can land that you believe right now that's better than where you are. So find that for yourself. Find a really powerful thought for yourself that you can bring yourself back to and anchor yourself to. Um, that is so helpful. So, so helpful. The emotions that I focused on, so I talked about like not going down that pain and punishment route, really focusing on love for myself, for my body, for what I'm going through, for this time in my life, which is, you know, not going to be a normal time. Like a, this, my life isn't going to look like this forever. So really appreciating that for what it is. Like this is amazing time although it is extremely crazy, but just loving it for what it is. Um, calm, <sighs> again, postpartum is a wild ride. So bringing it back to calm as much as you can. And then confidence. This one is huge. It's huge for you no matter where you are in your weight loss journey is confidence. Really easy to get pulled into doubt, worry, and overwhelm that you're not doing the right thing, that your body can't handle this, that that you might do something wrong. Um, and I'm gonna go into a lot of this later on, but at this postpartum journey, is it's really easy to get sucked into that because other people's opinions. <laughs> We're gonna go over all that, but it's really easy to get sucked into that worry and that doubt and that overwhelm. So always ground, oops, I just knocked into my desk really hard. Um, always grounding myself in confidence that my body knows best. My body has my back and it has my baby's back and it's gonna do the right thing for us. And it's always gonna let me know if it needs an adjustment. So I was never ever married to any diet, any calorie count, anything, in particular, which is why you guys, I always hammer home that you don't need a diet and you don't need to restrict and you don't need to deprive. You don't need to count calories. You don't need to count macros. You don't need to follow this specific thing. You need to do what your body is telling you to do. First, you have to be able to listen, but once you can listen, your body has your back. It is going to tell you what it needs and it's going to adjust those needs as needed. 
how many more times can I say needs? But <laughs> for real. So I, I grounded myself in that confidence that my body is going to tell me what it needs. So when you can lead from that place, you don't need someone else telling you what to eat and you don't need a count and you don't need to, I don't know, carb control or cut out dairy. Like you don't need any of that. You just need to be able to listen to your body because it's going to tell you. And I can't do that for you. And no other expert can only your body can. So that was really huge for me. And I was always willing to change things as needed, which is like why diets don't work. I know I say that all the time, but like, come on, if we're trying to follow this diet and our body's needs change and the diet says that changing it up isn't right because the diet, then you're not listening. You're not listening. You have to be able to listen. Okay. Soapbox. All right. Be wary of, especially in those, those early postpartum days, the doubt, the stress, the overwhelm, the anxiety, they're going to pop up. They're still, I experience these a lot too, um, in the early days and I still am experiencing them. So the degree has changed a lot. It's gone down a lot, but they're still there. And these emotions are what we eat to get out of at any stage in our life. They're the most common ones that we're eating to, so that we don't have to experience. So you're going to just know they're going to be heightened during your postpartum days. Um, and you might feel a really strong desire to go get some food to help you manage those emotions. So be aware of that. Um, what I teach my clients and what I did a lot and I'm still doing is to anticipate these emotions. If these are the emotions that are going to cause your brain to start talking to you about eating, we have to prepare for them to come up. So what we often want to do in any weight loss journey is say that today that's not going to happen. Today, I'm not going to be tempted to overeat. Today, I'm not going to experience doubt and overwhelm. And so there will be no risk of me wanting to overeat. And it's just not true. It's just not true. And you're setting yourself up for failure by telling yourself that it's not going to happen today. You're going to be completely unprepared when it does happen. And it is going to happen. So what I teach my clients and what I did throughout this process is prepare for for that to happen. Have a plan. When I'm stressed today and my brain starts telling me, just go to the pantry, there's some chips in there, they're gonna fix everything, you're gonna feel amazing after you eat them. When that comes up, this is how I'm gonna handle it. I'm gonna be calm, I'm gonna take some deep breaths, I'm gonna bring myself back to, I wanna lose weight more than I wanna use food to manage my emotions right now. That food might help for this moment, but long-term it's not gonna help. I'm gonna feel real terrible in an hour and probably in an hour, my baby's gonna need me again. And at that point, I'm gonna still be stressed out. I'm even more stressed out because I ate the chips to deal with it in the first place. Like I take myself through that and I'm prepared to deal with it. So being prepared is so important. I'm just gonna do a quick analogy here. Let's say, you live on the coast and you wake up one day and it's real cloudy and the weather's looking real scary. And all of a sudden a hurricane starts and you're like, oh my God, I have to get my family to safety, make sure my house is you know, prepared for this hurricane. We got to get the hell out of Dodge. We got to pack suitcases. I got to get my kid, like all the, and you're freaking out because you have to do this right now. The hurricane is upon you. And like it's happening and you're so panicked and just this is the toughest situation that you've ever had to deal with. I mean, that's this is a little extreme analogy here. As opposed to a week before the hurricane hits, they're like, hey, there's a hurricane coming. It's going to happen on this day. So do what you need to do right now to get ready for it. Pack up your house, 
get book a hotel out of town, make sure you know you got your kids out, your house is boarded up, all the things that you would do to prepare for a hurricane. Do those now. You have a week to prepare. You would be like, okay, yeah, hurricane's not fun, not cool at all, but I have a week to prepare. I can do this. I can get everybody to safety. We're gonna be all safe and good. Nothing bad is gonna, like nothing really, really bad is gonna happen because we're gonna be able to get out to safety. So much better having that preparation. This is what we do when it comes to our brain telling us to eat. We say on a daily basis, it won't happen today. And then we're surprised when it does happen. We don't know how to handle it. It happens and we freak out, we panic and we end up eating. What I want you to do is to be prepared like you would for that hurricane. Like, I know that it's going to happen today. It's probably going to happen at this time or around this situation. And this is how I'm going to handle it. And then when it happens, you're like, I'm ready. I'm, I'm here for it. And it's okay. And I can handle it. It's not a big deal. I can get myself through it. So doing that for yourself is huge. It's so helpful. I cannot stress it enough. Having that, that mental preparedness and mental plan in place. Um, again, I think I said this one already, but I'm always willing to make changes to whatever I'm eating that are going to be best for my, for my body and my baby and feeding my baby. I'm, um, breastfeeding. So if there were ever any changes to my milk supply, I was hundred percent willing to, you know, do whatever I needed to do in order to make sure that I'm able to feed my baby. Like that takes precedence. So the weight loss never took precedence. My health, my baby's health and being able to feed my baby took precedence always. Um, so that was really important for me. I, I just want to note that having that as part of your plan is important. Um, and then also, so I have my baby September 15th. Um, I think I was felt ready to get started with this journey. Um, uh, let's see, at the end of October. Yeah, so about six weeks after I had the baby. And and then basically, like I, I lost weight for a month. So October to the end of November. Or I'm sorry, good God. Basically, the month of November, I was losing weight. I lost about 10 pounds in that month. And then we got into the holidays. And I decided I don't want to lose weight during the holidays. I want to maintain. I want to have the cookies, have the dinners out, have the cheese and crackers and the wine and not, not lose the weight. I'm going to still weigh in. I'm going to still be honoring my body, but the weight loss is not going to be my priority. And it wasn't. And that was an amazing decision for me. Um, so you are always free to make that choice for yourself to say, this isn't the right time for me to lose weight. I'm going to maintain, I'm going to go on vacation and I'm going to have cake from that buffet every night. And that's my choice. <laughs> And I'm okay with it. So you can always make that decision. Always, always. Um, and that was my decision and it was wonderful. And I still actually went down during the holidays. So I think I talked about that maybe here or maybe on social media, on Instagram, which by the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, that's where I do all the posting. It's my name, H-A-Y-L-E-Y -E underscore Sohn, S-O-H-N, so my first and last name. Um, but you can go watch my stories. I'm on there like every day. I post a lot and talk about everything that's going on. So if you want more like more than once a week connection, go follow me. I, I don't think I've ever mentioned that before. Um, but I might have been talking about it on the stories there that like, hey, I made a plan to maintain my weight right now at this time. And I have been having the wine and having the cookies and I still lost weight. The scale's still going down. And that's really what happens when you're able to honor your body. Your body will naturally adjust. So if I'm eating cookies um, at night, 
my hunger level the next day is going to be completely adjusted based on that increase in calories the day before. And I always experience that. Like my body is always adjusting to, because it wants to maintain my weight. It wants to weigh what it wants to weigh. So it's, it's when you listen to your body, it is always going to be adjusting to help you maintain that weight or be at the weight that it wants to be. So I was still losing weight, even though it wasn't, I wasn't focusing on it. I wasn't, um, I was, I wasn't, uh, saying like, okay, I'm going to have cookies one night this week. I was like, I'm going to have cookies anytime they present themselves and I want to eat them (laughs) and I'm okay with that. Um, where was I going with that? Good Lord. Okay. (laughs) Holy crap. I completely lost my train of thought, it, but because I was eating, uh, I was eating the cookies and my body was like adjusting my intake at other points in the day, my, the weight was still coming off. So it wasn't a focus, but I was still losing weight. That's what I was going to say. All right. So lessons learned. This process really deepened my connection with my body. And if you come at it from that perspective. I kind of went into this when I was talking about like pain and punishment, um, punishing your body into weight loss. But if you come at this from the perspective of I, my body just did this incredible thing. And I have this other incredible opportunity to, again, deepen my relationship with my body and honor my body and appreciate it more for what it's capable of, then this journey is going to be really amazing and fun. It's not going to be this horrible thing that you have to do and ha- have to do air quotes around that never feels good. It never feels good. That's why my thought, my anchoring thought, I want to instead of I have to. Always make that adjustment, you guys. You want to do this. You don't have to do this. No one's holding a gun to your head. You want to do it. That is empowering. That feels powerful. I have to do this feels not good. It's not powerful at all. So this was something I wanted to do and I want to honor my body. And that really deepened my relationship with myself and made this so much more enjoyable. Um, and it, it can for you too. So, so find that place for yourself of this being an opportunity to honor your body, give it, give back to it for what it just did for you and your baby. I hope I'm not going to cry on this episode. I, the, the hormones are still strong. I'm four months out, but they're still so strong. I cry all the time. No, it's so bad. Okay. Um, so that was really wonderful. And, and having that as part of my journey has been really amazing. So I I would encourage you to find that place for yourself as well. Um, Another lesson learned, again, just take this at your own pace. If you are just starting with this approach, my my approach to weight loss, you're just learning about it. You're, you know, getting into it now. It's completely different than anything that you've done before when it comes to weight loss. And it's going to be a learning curve. So if right now in the craziness of just having a baby isn't a good time, that's okay. Take it slow, take it at your own pace, do what you can. Right now you don't have to do everything all at once, okay? So you gotta do what's working for you. Take one thing from this episode and do that. You don't have to do all of the things because you getting in, you can get yourself into overwhelm trying to do that, which is not going to be worth it at all. Okay. Um, another lesson learned having grace around and compassion for myself around like the craziness. So there were days where I would make myself food. And then before I had one bite of it, the baby's awake. I got to feed the baby. I burp the baby. I'm playing with the baby. I'm rocking the baby. Now it's four hours later. And that meal that I made is completely forgotten and cold in the kitchen. And I'm like, oh, you know, or there were days where, so my husband 
got into this habit of making me breakfast. So he would um, come and, you know, bring me breakfast in bed. I'm there either nursing the baby or, you know, sleeping sort of. And it was amazing, like amazing that he, you know, did that and it was so helpful for me. And then there were some days where he would just be like, here's a, here's a pan of cinnamon rolls or here's a bagel. And it was so sweet. And so what I'm trying to say with that is give yourself grace that stuff like that's going to happen. Like I was not about to turn down two cinnamon rolls just because I'm trying to lose weight. I'm also, you know, laid up in bed half the day trying to feed this baby and get it to sleep and like all of the things. So I was never like, oh, I can't eat this because I'm trying to lose weight or I'm losing weight. This isn't fitting in with my, it was just like, this is what it is. It's here. I'm, I'm not turning it down. I am hungry. <laughs> this isn't ideal, but none of it was ideal. So just being willing to like open that up. I was never ever, and I'm still not like turning down, you know, food that's, <laughs> that's brought to me in a very convenient manner when I'm really stressed out or struggling. Um, and know that that's going to happen. It's not always going to be perfect. And whatever you plan, that plan is probably going to have, you're probably going to have to make adjustments to it. Um, some major pitfalls. This is going to be good. Okay. So these are some pitfalls that, um, I found first and foremost, and it's the same as in last, the last episode, part one of this, <sighs> other people's opinions are the biggest pitfall. So we're going to go into a bunch of these. So these were some that I was told that were told to me. I am not sure if everyone is getting as many opinions as I am. Perhaps you are, perhaps you have, you know, a mother or mother-in-law who loves to give you opinions, or perhaps I'm a nutritionist who's in the weight loss space and people feel the need to like warn me, tell me about their experience, try and tell me that this is going to be way more difficult than I ever thought it could be. You never know. But I, I felt like I got a lot of opinions and maybe that's everybody. So these are some of the ones that I heard. Um, you won't make milk if you lose weight or if you try to lose weight while you're postpartum. Um, I got this one was sent in a message and as a couple of comments on some of the stuff that I was posting as I was talking about my postpartum weight loss journey. You didn't want a baby and you're a bad mother for talking about losing weight after having a baby. So if you get this, just know that you're not, as long as you are honoring your body, honoring your baby and your health, and that comes first, your health and your baby's health comes first, you're not a bad person or a bad mother or not having wanted a, and you didn't not want a baby because you're doing that because you're losing weight after you had a baby. Um, I didn't take this as anything. I, you know, laughed it off because people are ridiculous, but I don't want that to deter anyone else. If you get some hate for losing weight after having a baby, um, this is, nobody's business but your own. Okay, so let that one go. Um, I blocked all those people. I was like, you can F right off. <laughs> I don't need your opinion. Uh, anyways, okay, moving on. <laughs> oh, this is, this is one that you hear a lot. Breastfeeding is gonna melt the fat right off. It's gonna melt that baby weight right off. Um, which kind of was interesting to me because that leads into that you can, if you're breastfeeding, you can eat whatever you want and still lose weight, which is really similar to when you're pregnant, you're eating for two and you have to eat all of the things. So it's like the same thing. Like it, it carries through from pregnancy to postpartum that there's this outside circumstance that's going to change everything, the laws of physics, and you're going to be able to like, just eat whatever you want and you won't gain weight or you will eat whatever you want and you'll easily lose the weight. Um, and I just, 
never wanted my brain to go down that path. I talked about in the last episode that as soon as I got pregnant, I saw it start to go down this path of, well, you can eat whatever you want and you're going to gain weight anyways. And you're going to eat for two and just go start eating all the things. And so with the breastfeeding thing, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going down this path of, well, I'm breastfeeding so I can eat whatever I want. The pounds are just going to melt right off and I won't struggle with this. I never wanted to get into that mindset, which is why mindset was my number one focus for this whole thing to begin with. That is a mindset and it's really easy to get sucked into that. And that is someone's opinion, either from their experience or what they've heard. And you need to set your mindset ahead of time. Don't let all of these other opinions come in and dictate it for you. That's a very passive way of going about this and it's not going to be effective and it's not going to be fun for you. So decide, make these decisions for yourself from where you want to come at this from. Um, and then I also heard the opposite. Breastfeeding won't melt the fat off. Don't expect that you're going to be able to lose this weight after you have a baby because breastfeeding isn't going to be as effective as you think it's going to be. I was just like, okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, your hormone, your hormones are going to prevent you from losing weight. You won't be able to lose the weight until after you're done breastfeeding. Got that one. Um, you won't, you'll be too thin to make milk. Um, and that you have to eat tons of carbs in order to breastfeed, in order to make enough milk for your baby. Um, so whatever the opinion is, it's just that it's an opinion. It's someone else's experience or someone else's idea of how this is going to look for you. Don't take any of it as fact. None of it is fact. Do your own research. Do your own research and most importantly listen to your body because your body knows better than joe schmo's opinion and aunt sally's idea of what this whole journey is going to be for you so one of the things that i was told um this was by my lactation consultant love her to death i don't think she listens to this podcast but love 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 her she told me multiple times i think she was kind of concerned because i'm in the weight loss space that i was gonna pop out this baby and immediately like cut out carbs or something which is not my mo at all i love carbs <laughs> but she probably didn't know that so she kept telling me like you have to eat carbs you have to eat lots of carbs lots and lots of carbs or else you won't be able to make milk and i actually looked it up I was really curious if that was true. If I did go some days where I had lower carb, like, is that really gonna affect my supply? And there was a study done. They took um, breastfeeding women uh, and there was a control group and then two groups, one group got high carb, one group got low carb, higher fat, higher protein. And there was no, no difference in their milk supply. It really stayed consistent throughout. Um, so, with that information, I said again, I'm going to let my body's signals of when I need to fuel lead the charge as opposed to I have to follow a certain macros. Um, I don't, I think I wanted to for sure hit a protein number or just make sure I was prioritizing protein, not hit a protein number. I didn't mean that at all. Prioritizing protein um, for myself but I was never going to be strict on where my macros fell. I just wanted to listen to my body and let it lead in terms of how I felt energetically, physically, um, fuel wise, satiety wise, those are gonna lead as opposed to like, I have to eat this many carbs. So that was one where I really did dive in and do some research on and I, I wanted to be educated on that before I ever, you know, like was, which I didn't cut out carbs, but lowering carb intake. So you can always feel free to do your research on any of those opinions that I just stated and see what you find. Um, another thing, this is another pitfall. I found myself getting into eating really fast because you've got that plate in front of you and it might only be like five minutes until your baby starts crying. So you better eat the entire thing. And I did this a couple of times. And it's not a fun way to eat. I don't like eating like that. What I talk to my clients all the time about, what I talk about on here is letting, letting your satiety 
lead when you're going to finish your meal. And that takes time. It takes about 20 minutes for your brain to give real accurate um, signals to, I mean, I'm sorry, for your stomach to give your brain real accurate signals of where it is um, satiety wise, which means eating slowly, but I like eating slowly, enjoying my food. I like to taste it and like be present with my meal. And then I, all of a sudden I'm in this thing where like the plate's up to my chin and I'm just like shoveling the food down. So checking in with that, like, okay, so what if I'm five minutes into this meal and my baby starts crying? So what? Can I not revisit the meal in 10 or 30 minutes? I absolutely can. I'm totally willing to pause this meal to give my baby some love, do whatever they need and come back to it. And I, so just leading with that thought, that calm, that calm energy of like, it's okay if this meal gets interrupted, I can always come back to it. It's not going anywhere. That was so powerful for me. So I want to offer that to you um, to try on if you find yourself getting into these moments where you're just like scarfing it all down. It doesn't mean that I'm perfect. I'm still finding myself in those moments sometimes and that's okay. But I just don't want this to lead into like this new habit where all of my meals, whether I have a baby or a 10 year old, I'm just eating them as fast as I can and eating the entire plate no matter where my satiety is. That's really important. So sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, that's really gonna affect your hormone hormones and that's really gonna affect your body's signals to you about hunger and about satiety um, and your ability to lose weight. So I wanna offer that you might wait until your sleep is in a good place before you start doing this. You might, you might say, you know what, it's okay that I'm still sleep deprived. My baby wasn't sleeping through the night when I started mine, but she was only waking up like once or twice. So I was really a lot, had this very solid footing of sleep when I started. Um, and so I, I just wanna offer that to you. If you're not, if you're only running on a couple hours sleep, this might not be the right time and that's okay. Be okay with delaying it until your body is calm and rested your nervous system is calm your hormones are calmed down like that is priority over starting this weight loss journey hydration if you're breastfeeding or not sleeping <laughs> or really stressed out water you gotta be drinking water this was hard for me a lot harder than i thought it was gonna be there were days where i had a glass of water in the morning and then all of a sudden it was 10 p.m and i was like i have not had anything to drink at all today. And that's gonna be really stressful in your system, especially if you're trying to lose weight. Your body needs a certain amount of water in order to process fat and utilize fat for fuel. So making sure that you're drinking enough water, um, breastfeeding will also is gonna use up a good amount of water. So making sure that you're drinking water, so important. Just water, plain water. You don't need anything fancy, but Hydration is key. Um, I had this other worry, and this came from, lo and behold, other people's opinions and stories about their journeys, but that my body wasn't going to be able to bounce back, that I might not be able to lose the weight, that I might look different forever. Um, so that was kind of this worry like that was running in the back of my mind that I don't think I ever fully addressed until I really started to lose the weight because you hear that, you know, these are some other people's stories. Like my body never looked the same. I never lost the baby weight. I just, you know, I gained 10 pounds with my baby and then I just had that 10 pounds forever. Um, and I, I, yeah, I wasn't sure what to believe. And I kind of walked into that, like that, that might be a fact that I might not have control over this. And I just want to offer you, I don't think that thinking like that is useful at all. I think it's very limiting and can keep you stuck. So again, I, I did bring myself back to, okay, that is someone else's experience and that is someone else's opinion. And before I take that as fact, I'm going to see how my body does. 
and how this feels for me. And 100% what I found, that's someone else's opinion. That has not been my experience. And I think you, whether it's true or not for you, walking into it with an open mind and with that thought not solidified in your mind as a fact is going to be so much more empowering to you than repeating that thought to yourself. It's not useful. It's not helpful. You have so much more control and power than you realize when you keep an open mind and when you just say, I'm going to let my body lead. So much more powerful. Don't get sucked into other people's mindsets and let their mindset create your mindset. Again, you have to be proactive about this, not passive. If you're passive, other people's opinions and mindsets are going to lead yours. They're going to become yours. And then you're at the mercy of that someone else's thought and you're going to get someone else's result because of it so i wanted to share this a client of mine um is actually postpartum and she has had difficulty getting off her postpartum weight um she when we spoke she was like i think it's 100 percent hormonal and what we worked on this is what we worked on so First and foremost, when you believe that your weight is 100% caused by something that's outside of your control, such as hormones or metabolism, which I want to argue that neither of those is outside of your control, but for the sake of this, um, <laughs> when it's something that like hormones or metabolism that you're like, I can't you know, control how old I am and my metabolism is dictated by my age or my hormones are dictated by my age and I can't control that, you stop When you use that mindset, you stop listening to your body and you go into all of these other thought patterns that are, well, what's one more bite? My metabolism's wrecked anyways. My hormones suck anyways. What's one more bite? I may as well eat it because my hormones aren't gonna allow me to lose weight anyways. My metabolism isn't gonna allow me to lose weight, so I might as well just eat it. Nothing I do works because my metabolism, because my hormones, so I might as well. We go into all of those thought patterns. We don't realize it. We think it's just my metabolism, it's just my hormones, but in the background, here are all these other thought patterns that are actually having such a much bigger impact on your weight result than your hormones or your your metabolism. So, that's what we worked on pulling out some of those where do you actually have control if it is fact that you have no control over your hormones or your metabolism then where do we have control we have control over your mindset how you're thinking about all of that and your mindset is going to dictate your results so we worked on that um and then when i said okay just she, she was talking about you know what her her eating looks like for the day slow down instead of letting this schedule of eating dictate when you eat listen to your body let that dictate when you eat and she was like oh i was eating way more than i needed to be eating when i just push pause for a second which she's breastfeeding so that was kind of a fear i could lose my milk supply but when i just push pause and said okay yes this is technically when i would eat but I'm gonna just listen to my body first. She was like, I'm not, yeah, I'm just fueling and my body just isn't asking for it. And I'm doing that out of habit, out of thinking that I have to because I'm breastfeeding, all those things. Um, and she lost like 10 pounds in two weeks. Like pretty incredible, really, really incredible. So for this reason, I'm so confident that my approach to weight loss can help you no matter what stage you are in hormonally postpartum metabolically because there is so much more wiggle room than you realize so much of it is dictated by your mindset and by just listening to your body your body knows it's talking to you you just don't know how to listen 
So that was pretty amazing. So I want to offer you that story of if you've been stuck in this postpartum, like hormonal, whatever thing, and you feel like it might be really difficult for you to lose weight. This is a really fantastic story of two tweaks that release 10 pounds in, in two weeks. It's totally possible. Okay. Um, this is another one that came up. Is it okay to be hungry? I, this was someone else's opinion about being hungry when you're breastfeeding and something that I was getting myself all wrapped up and worked up about that I need to be just eating all the time. Um, and again, I just had to bring myself back to like, okay, my body has my back and it has my baby's back. It wants us both to survive and thrive. It's not going to lead me in the wrong direction. And if it does, if I'm experiencing letting, you know, allowing some hunger in my day and all of a sudden my milk supply drops, like I will just go back to doing whatever, <laughs> like eating. I'll, I'm willing to just eat the pantry in order to make sure that like I'm healthy and my baby's healthy. So I, I kind of went into it with that mindset. But what I found is that my body has been spot on 100% of when I need to fuel and when I don't need to fuel. And my milk supply has been consistent throughout. So it has never come up as an issue. Experiencing hunger while you're breastfeeding or any stage in your life is not a bad thing. It's not dangerous to your health or your baby's health. And it's not a bad thing. It's your body's natural way of talking to you. Okay. Um, so that was my experience. A hundred percent experiment for yourself. Find that for yourself. You're, you're going to have to do your own research with that, but that really worked out amazingly for me. And I realized like all of these fears that I had about it were un completely unfounded. They were founded in other people's opinions, <laughs> just where most of them are. And that's kind of like the moral of this episode <laughs> and last week's too. <laughs> okay. Um, I do want to say individuality. This is a hugely, you know, having a baby and your experience postpartum is hugely individual. So this is my experience and what I'm offering to you as far as what I found to work for me. Don't take this at face value. You need to listen to your body, to your healthcare providers first and foremost, and decide what works for you. This is going to be an individual experience um, and very unique. So you have a unique situation, no matter what that looks like. It's all, we're all going through this in, in unique experiences. All right, none of that, what I just said made that much sense, but hopefully you get the gist. Um, I, okay, so that leads me into this. I spoke with someone who wanted to work with me. She's postpartum um, and she's like, well, I wanna lose the weight, but my baby's just not sleeping. And I feel like I'm gaining weight. And I was like, don't do this until you're ready. Don't force yourself into it until you're ready. If your baby is not sleeping, if there's some other like added stress in the mix, then you are not ready and that's okay. It's okay to wait. It's okay to pause. And that was my advice to her. Don't do this until you are 100% ready, until you feel well rested, until your health and your baby's health are like stable and good to go. And you feel very solid in that. There's no need to do any of this. This can all wait. So, you know, you got to get yourself to a place where you just are feeling good on a day to day basis before you do anything. Um, don't do it until you feel ready until your healthcare provider tells you that you're ready. Okay, so that's that. That is the episode for today. This was really fun. It's been this journey of postpartum weight loss has been so fun and so amazing. And I hope that you see that yours can be too. 
it can be a really wonderful experience um, and something that you really enjoy and have fun doing. And if you have questions about it, I'm just gonna tell you to go back to my Instagram page. Follow me on Instagram and DM me. People DM me all the time and just ask questions. I'm always happy to answer them. So never feel shy. I love chatting with you guys. So my Instagram is my name, H-A-Y-L-E-Y underscore Sohn, S-O-H-N. Go there, follow me, send me a message if you have questions. And I will also say that if you love this podcast and my approach, come work with me in my program, okay? It's amazing and the people are amazing. It will change your life. It will completely transform your life. And you'll be done with your weight loss struggle. Okay, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.